Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. And I ask the Lord, speak. That your name will be made known in this place. Heal the sick. Liberate the confused mind. Let the hopeless attain hope. The one that is at the verge of giving up, give them the courage to move on. May every deception leave and grant us unique revelation and understanding to your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call it done. Amen. You want to move you with me to Jeremiah chapter number 29. Jeremiah chapter number 29. And I want to read from the fourth verse. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried unto Ezra from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have your sons and daughters marry and have sons and daughters find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters increase in number there do not decrease also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which i have carried you into exile pray to the lord for it because it is if it prospers you too will prosper yes this is what the lord almighty the god of israel says do not let the prophet and diviners among you deceive you do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have they are prophesying lies to you in my name i have not sent them declares the lord this is what the lord says when 70 years are completed for babylon I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. It is very important how we build our lives when you build a life that is based on falsehood it is very dangerous because reality was certainly setting and when reality setting it is then that you will know that you've spent so much time building something that cannot stand the test of time. Jesus said in John chapter number, t- number 8, he said, for you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And the people were mad. They said, we have never, we are the sons of Abraham and we've never been in bondage. But he says that you will know the truth. Because when you discover the truth about your life, it makes you more certain in life. You don't waver. And in, in, in spite of the issues and challenges of life, you still can sail through the storms of life. It doesn't matter what happens. Whether tough times, difficult times, whatever it is, you are so certain that this is what God says about my life and it's very important because there is so much falsehood that is going on around us that if you don't take care you buy into it but jesus also says something i think in matthew when he was speaking to them he said he who that hears these words of mine and put them into practice and he said that it's a liking to the one that builds his house on a rock. The storms 
will come. The wind will blow. And the rains will come. And never ever delude yourself to think that the rains will never fall. Never ever think that the wind will not come. And never ever live a life thinking that the storms of life will not blow. These things certainly will come. And Jesus is saying that if we're going to be able to live a life that is based and entrenched in his word, which is the truth of your life, he says that I will give you a future that is based, that is a formidable future. Future that is entrenched in me. That it doesn't matter when and where the storms of life will come. You will still be stable. Because the people of Israel, the, 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 the scripture we just look at. The Bible says that Israel had been carried into captivity. And the Bible says that after they had gone into captivity, there was a prophet called Hananiah who said that this whole slavery or this whole thing is going to last for two years. So what you're going to do is that put yourself together. When you read the chapter number 28, he said, put yourself together. In the presence of Jeremiah, the guy was bold enough to speak these words. He was so sure and he said that this is what the law says. Look at it in Jeremiah chapter number 20. He said that I want you to, to, to put yourself together. This thing is going to last for two years. And the Lord God is going to bring you back to this place. It's very important. Because oftentimes, if you don't understand the mind of God and what he's doing in your life, certain things that he has orchestrated for your life, you will see them as cares. That is a blessing. Because he says that, for I know the plans that I have towards your life. It is a plan that is not of evil, but to bring you to an expected end and to give you a hope and a future. You see, when your life is entrenched in God, he will never do anything that would disadvantage you. I don't know whether you heard me. Whatever he does advantages your life. Whatever he does, even though you see it as something that doesn't work. But like Apostle Paul said that, he said, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. If you love the Lord, if you are called according to his purpose, he will definitely work it in such a way that at the end of the day, it prospers you. You didn't hear me. And so Israel were buying into the mind of this guy. And they were putting themselves together that, you know what, this thing is going to last for two years. And let me just put myself together and carry my bags and baggage. I'm not buying a house. Neither am I setting up any business. In fact, I'm not marrying. Because I know that two years time, I'm just going to carry you to the place where I picked you from. But the Lord has an assignment for each and every one. Some of us came into this country thinking that we're coming to study. And then you study, you finish studying, and then you go and do whatever you want to do. But little did we know that the Lord had a different assignment for us. A whole new plan that he had arranged. It's like your life is on a chessboard. And he moves it to a place. He is rearranging it. And then when the time comes for him to unveil his plan. You look at it and he said, no, this is my plan. And I'm going to go back. And he says that, no, that is what I have arranged for your life. The journey is 
going to take 70 years. How you frame your mind and how you work yourself out will determine how you come out of it. It is going to last for more than a generation. And what I want you to do is that I want you to put yourself together to ensure that you settle within the community. I want to give you influence. And I'm taking you to this place for a reason. I'm carrying you, although you see yourself that you are in captivity. But I have brought you to this place in order to give you influence. When the season of 70 years is up, and I show up to take you, what I want you to know is that I want you to come out with your children. I want you to come out with your sons and with your daughters. Those times I would have prospered you, you would have had more than a property. You will sell it and pull your money and bring it back to this place. You see, every time we've got to understand the workings of God for our lives. There is a specific place God has blessed for you. There is a place he has allocated for you. It doesn't matter what happened. Everybody will dwell in that place. They will not survive. But you get there and it just works for you. Because that is where God has prospered you. The Bible says in Matthew, Genesis chapter number 20 says, He said, and Isaac sold in the land of famine. And land noted with famine. The Bible says that when he sold in the land, he reaped not 50, not 60. But he reaped a hundredfold. And I'm sure people were confused. Because a land that doesn't work for everybody was working for him. Because he was in his season and at the right place. The Bible says that he wanted to move out. And God said that stay here. For it is this place I will bless you. I will prosper you. I will cause you to gain influence within this community. And that is exactly the same thing. God was saying that, I want you to live in that land. Settle there. Don't make up your mind to move out. Anybody that's telling you that this journey is going to take two years is lying to you. You see, how you think is very important. What you do and how your life is moving is as a result of what do you think? And that is why you've got to be careful. Your, your, your thought process, your cognitive process, what you process. And I was telling the church, I said that, you see, from the foundations of the earth, God's intention for humanity is that we will dominate influence. The very day that man sinned, the Bible says that when we got out of the Garden of Eden, God at each time during the cool of the day will move himself. Anytime that God meets man, what he does is that he removes himself into man. So man at each point, so long as we were connected to God, we had the mind of God. The Bible says that that is why when Adam, whatsoever name that Adam gave to everything God had created, God didn't change it. Because he was one in terms of his mind with God. The very day man sinned, we began to rely on our senses. What we see, what we hear, the way what our senses speak to us was what we work with. But we have to bring ourselves to a place that we don't only live by our senses, but we live through faith and by the word of the Lord and the speakings of the Lord. Because oftentimes, most of the time, what God says about your life will contradict your situation. It wouldn't make sense. You cannot make sense out of what God is saying. How can you tell me that Jesus is healing somebody? If somebody is having an issue with their eye, the last thing that you would do is to put sun together and put it on the eye. That's the last thing you're going to do. But Jesus didn't pick up and, 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 and spit on the floor and put it in the sand and then put it, apply it on the eye and he gets healed. This doesn't make sense. Somebody is sick and you're telling the person, go and wash yourself. In that book, it doesn't make sense. These are things that we will be confronted with at each point in our lives. 
But we've got to move ourselves beyond that point and embrace the reality and the truth of our lives. There is one thing that I have said that I get I am afraid of. I don't fear anything. There is only one thing I'm afraid. When I'm not hearing the voice of God, I get agitated. I, I just, it messes me up. Because once I hear the voice of, it doesn't matter what it is. Whether it is rain, shine, whatever it is, that is what I'm going with. In the midst of the waters, he will tell me, put cement there, I will put it there. Because that is what was stand. And, and, and these were the, the intention of the devil was that he would cripple the people of Israel. So what he was saying was that, you see, sometimes the devil cannot come into your life. But so many people you have trusted as advisors and instructors are the people that would take you out of the vision and the mind of God. There are so many people that you trust. You, you trust them so much. And when they realize that you trust them so much, then all of a sudden, there is a word that emanates from their mouth that it looks like it's a kosher. The guy was not afraid. In the midst and in the presence of Jeremiah, he spoke and said, Thou say yes, the Lord. It is going to last for two years. It's not two years. Then the Bible says that while they were standing there, Jeremiah said, Hear the voice of the Lord. Now we know who he's talking. And it's in 70 years, you're going to be in for 70 years. If you will prepare your mind and settle within the 70 years, the better it becomes for you. Sometimes the Lord takes us to certain offices and certain workplaces. It is not that he's punishing us. You've made several attempts to leave. The more you want to leave, the more he keeps you there. He's there for a reason. He wants to show you something. He's just processing your life to be able to take you to the next dimension and the next level. Unless the Lord moves you, you cannot change it. He says that for 70 years, make up your mind. Think all right. Be careful what you think. Even as we go through this whole month, we go through this whole year. Be careful what you think. Be careful what you see. Be careful what comes and how you process what you think. I'm doing a series back at home and we're telling, taking control of your mind. Most of the things, the devil is messing up with the way we think. Many times, we, all of a sudden we are enjoying it. We leave church. When we come to church, we are lifted. We are inspired. We step out and we get into the reality. Instead of confronting the situation with the word which we have, then we come down. We are not too sure whether it works or it doesn't work. The gospel is not a cliche. It is a truth. It deals with every situation. A, 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 any situation that it is, it, it breaks it and moves into it. He said that, he said that, you know one thing I want you to do? I want you to understand that it is a last thing for Yes. Change the way you think. If you know that it's going to last for two years, you know what you're going to do? You're not going to plan. You were going to live in a rented apartment for the rest of their life. And that's how some of us have been. Sometimes we make up our own, we just want to go. In next year, I'm going. In next two years, I'm going. In next three years, I'm going. And that two years doesn't come. We keep going. We keep going. And we keep going. And I did ask somebody. I said, he said, he said but I'm not going to, I'm not going to back there. I said, you, you know what? I said, how long have you lived where you're living? He said, I've lived there for 10 years. I said, really? For 10 years? The same house, 10 years? And I said, who is collecting that money? He said, my landlord. I said, you don't have any penny in it. Your mind is not stable. If the Lord is blessing you, he doesn't know how he's blessing you. Because you've not made up your mind to leave and stay. You have not made up your mind to understand the mindset of God for your life. It's a change the way you think. Begin to see yourself that 
in the next 70 years, if you have any plan that you have for me, have a short-term plan, but I want you to have a long-term plan of 70 years. I'm taking you through 70 good years. Make up your mind to marry. Don't begin to think that I'm in a foreign land, so I'm not going to marry. I want you to eat what I eat. Settle down. What are you doing? Settle down. You know what? Because I have a plan for you. You being in that situation is part of my plan and my process. It is part of the journey. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus, there was a town called Nazareth. It was a small town. But little did they know that one day there is somebody that is going to be giving birth to in a manger. Until date, you mention Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That town and that city has changed forever because of one person. He's taken you through that process for a reason. It is part of his package. I want, to, I want to give you influence. I want to give you so much influence. But what I want you to understand is that I want you to increase. There is a blessing in increase. Some of you, I know sometimes you get annoyed when you get some calls from some countries. But now they've moved some back offices and most back offices to those countries because of their numbers. Whether you like it or not, they are moving it. They are cutting jobs everywhere. Where are they putting it? They put it in back office in somewhere in Asia. They are influencing, dominating every area of our society because of their numbers. Every country wants to strike a deal with China. Every country will want to strike a deal with it. Every country will want to strike a deal with some of this populous nation because of their numbers. Don't deceive yourself to think that I'm just going to go and come back. Go. Increase in number. You know what, church? The storms of life, it will certainly come. You will have people around your life that will discourage you. But you've got to be steadfast in your thinking. The storms of life, it will certainly blow. But be steadfast in your thinking. Because I know the plans he has for my life. They are plans good, not of evil, but to me to an expected end. Oh Jesus, help us. Some of us, we gave up too quickly. When you don't know what your life represents, anybody will give you and will describe you who you are because you don't know who you are. When you go to the shop and they've put a price tag on that, it's either you buy it or you walk out. But you make your judgment based on the value of the thing. And sometimes if you feel that it doesn't value that much, you leave it. And you go. You've got to be able to bring yourself to the place where you know your price tag. You know the value which you have. It's either people side with you or they walk away. If you don't agree with me, you say, I know what I want in life. I know what I am looking for. And what I'm looking for, when I get it, I know I have it. But for now, I don't feel it that I'm there yet. And I will not stop in the middle of the way thinking that I have a right. I will not give myself peace. And I will give the devil no peace. Because I know what I am looking for. 
and you can't give me counterfeit as the normal you see you gave up but they are all part and parcel of life and part of the package the bible says that count it all joy when you are faced with all kinds of tests until your faith and your confidence in God is tested you will not progress how confident are you? how confident are you? are you so confident about what God can do? I am so sure of where the Lord is taking me because sometimes if you are not sure the devil will mess up your mind I don't know whether you've been to hospital and they will tell you all kinds of things that you have these issues. The other day I said that it is not a cancer that kills. It is a thought of cancer that kills. Because you see, you're doing very well until the day that you are given the report that you have this. And all of a sudden, everything that is within you shut down. You ask yourself, why is it that when I was walking to that hospital, I was fine. All of a sudden, I went and I received a medical report and it changed my mood. Everything about me changed. I was so confident in that project that it will work until I sat in front of an, a financial advisor who doesn't know where I'm going. Who doesn't know my future? Who doesn't know how profitable that venture is? And just based on his calculation and gave me just any answer and threw me out of that place. He doesn't know. He has no idea. He has no clue. Do you believe in your vision? Do you believe in your, in your, in your business idea? Do you believe in it? The first time that it happened, they said that in the book of Genesis, Jacob slept. He said, and, I, and the Lord showed me how and, in, and he said that I want you to, to, to cut a stick and change, take all the speckled animals away. That was an incredible investment plan. You can't justify this with logic and reasoning. That time, it wouldn't make sense when he's in it. You know something, church? Let me tell you this. The Lord will give you an idea, but he will not study for you. The Lord will give you an investment idea, but he will never invest for you. When you hear him speak, act with it. That is what he can bless you with. But he can never force you to do it. That is what you have to be very careful. What you think and how you lead your life. You have to spend quality time with God. Because you know something? Anytime that we get connected to God, He gives us a piece of Himself. The Bible says that whenever Adam was spent time with Him, that was a time that God spent in moving Himself and increasing Himself in the life of Adam. That is what prayer does. That is what spending quality time with the Lord. That is what it does. Because any time that you come out of the closet, you come with fresh revelations. You step out of your door. And sometimes you just, you just step out of your door. So you pick up your phone and say, today I'm not going to work. Today I'm not working. Little do you know that there's an accident the Lord is taking you out of. You wake up in the morning and you just call your financial. I want you to, you call your broker. I want you to move the money from this. Only realize that the market in that same day. You come out with fresh revelations. You've got to, you've got to be careful. If this year you're going to be successful. You have to be careful what you think and what you process. Spend time with the Lord. Discover the truth of your life and about your situation and your circumstance. Let nothing throw you off. The wind will blow. The storms will certainly come. But ask yourself where the foundation of your life is. Is it founded on a rock? 
where is it founded is it founded on the rock is it on the rock that when the storms of life comes you are still standing when when the rain comes you are still standing it doesn't matter what the situation is you are still standing anyway because you are very sure of what the Lord says about your life I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody this morning but there is so much that we have heard there is so much our minds are processing you see we have we've managed to trust so much in the systems of the world we trust it so much in, in, in our senses and many times we are analyzing it based on what we can see but you see if there is a life that is beyond what we can see beyond what we can feel whenever the Lord speaks he doesn't consult your situation before he speaks I love the scripture who says that he said, he said don't mind Jeremiah said don't mind the people they, you see, they encourage you to have dreams there is something that is called presumptuous prophecy. Sometimes people look at the situation you are in and they just want to sympathize with you. And they want to give you something that will make you feel better. Sometimes when you are in certain situations, it is very difficult to hear the truth. When we tell you the truth, you will not, you will not listen. What, what, kind of, what kind of prophet is this? What kind of word is this? Did I really hear from the Lord? Did the Lord really say, yes? Are you telling me that, Lord, you are, you are taking us into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar that is going to maltreat us for 70 good years? Oh, Jesus, help us. May the Lord help us. Every falsehood you've put into that is regulating your life that may be coming from any angle. It could be from anywhere. You see, anything that is not consistent with the word of God is falsehood. It's as simple. If you want to define what it is, that is what the truth I'm telling you. Anything that is not consistent with the word of the Lord concerning that particular situation. That is why I, 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 I like that king. Jehoshaphat. He said, anytime there is war, he said, is that not a prophet? Let us inquire the mind of the Lord. Because when the Lord tells us that we will win this battle, there is no need. There is no need. There's no fuss about it. There is no need. We need to worry ourselves. Let us hear the voice of the Lord. Who said that Jesus said that? Is there anyone that will go to war without assessing the strength of his army? When he knows the mind of God concerning the situation, concerning the battle, whether we will lose, then we will not bother ourselves to go and kill people, but we will make peace. That is the best strategy. Sometimes we are fighting certain battles. We are fighting losing battles. The battles we have already lost. Before you began, you've already lost it. There was no need to go for that battle. You shouldn't have even prepared yourself. And we move into it only to ruin our lives. There are certain investments we don't need to go into it. In the, in the eyes of men, it looks so good. Only for you to put your money in it and realize that, that you are sinking. The more you put money into it, the more you are sinking. The more it is good, the more you are sinking. It is draining your capital. You borrowed money. If you had sought for his, for his idea, you wouldn't have ventured even into that. It is not all that glitters. I told you the other day, some open doors, they are open grave. They are not doors. Some open doors are open grave. You see it very nice. You to realize that when you step into it, you're only going to die. 
if you have an eye that sees beyond yourself. And I pray that every truth that concerns your life, every truth the Lord says about your life, the truth concerning your health, the truth that concerns your academics, the truth that concerns your finances, the truth that concerns your the, every situation of your life. We demand in the name of Jesus that it shall be established. No math will destroy it. In the name of Jesus, the grace of the Lord will lift you out of the ashes and will bring you to that place. Anything anybody has spoken to discourage you and to make you think and believe in falsehood. We demand in the name of Jesus, we cancel it. And we ask that the truth of the law will be maintained, established and will be entrenched in your life. You will not fail. This year you will prosper. This year the Lord will bring to pass that which concerns your life. In the name of Jesus, things that are spoken things that are written things that have been orchestrated to destabilize the hands of the lord over your life we rewrite them we cancel them in the name of jesus and we demand that the heavens will spoke will speak over your life we lift you to the place where you belong you will succeed where you have not made it because you have entered into your season may every door open and may you walk in it you will be a testimony people will speak about you people will testify about you people will not understand why the lord has made you so because he says that i know the plans when you are in your season it doesn't matter what people do you prosper anyway because you have entered into your season for this is your season this is your season this is your season walk in it enjoy it in the name of jesus what the devil has done he did it for your good because he did it to reawaken you in the name of jesus i see you walk into your blessing and you walk into your supernatural overflow. May miracles testify. May miracles surround your life. In the name of Jesus. He said that weeping may endure. But for a night. That season. A new day has dawned. The time and the season. He said I bring you a future. I bring you a hope. Oh Jesus I love you. I thank you, Jesus. I love him when he says that. He said, I have a future and I give you hope. You see, hope is what destabilizes the future, the uncertainties of the future. Did you hear me? I said, I said your hope is what destabilizes the uncertainties of the future. The reason why some of you have not killed yourself because you know that tomorrow will be better. That is your hope. When the devil wants to attack you, he doesn't touch anything. When he messes up your hope, he messes up your future. That is why you must guard yourself, your hope. Because your hope, the Bible says that, the Bible says that, it says, Job said that even a tree, when it is cut now, it has a hope. It looks as if now when you walk around, it looks like all the trees are dead. Wait till we enter into March and April. And you will see the green ones. They are shooting up. I see you just shooting up. In the mighty name of Jesus. The hope the Lord gave you. The hope that has edged you on. That in spite of the challenges of life. You are still moving through the phases of life. To move into the troops. I see that faith being rewarded. I see that hope being rewarded. Even in the name of Jesus. The Lord is establishing his will and his mandate for the truth of the Lord shall stand anyway concerning your life. There is one thing that I am very sure about that when I pray the Lord hears me. Don't mess up. 
and I know so you are. You have to bring yourself to the place where you understand that when you pray, the Lord hears you. Because any time that you enter into the closet, you are coming with answers. You are coming with victory. You are coming with testimonies. I'm here man, for signs and wonders. The world has not seen anything. The world has not seen anything. You see, when people are, 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 are trying to manipulate your life, just look at them. Be stable. Let your mind be, be, be accord on God and it's truth and it's right. Behold, hold on to it. Don't keep moving here and there. Keep to it. Many times we are so afraid of what the devil is doing. Of what the issues and circumstances of life. If you look at at, at the sky, if you look at the weather, you will not even put a seed on the ground. When, when the Bible says that, he said, Jacob sold. It only takes a man that has his mind is made up to gather the confidence to put a seed on the ground. When you know there is a substantial evidence that there is no rain. In the midst of that confusion, the Lord said, so, I'm sure when he was sowing it, what is this guy doing? You don't need to understand me. You see, people must not be able to predict your life. A man controlled by the spirit cannot be predicted. When you are doing certain things, keep on doing it. Keep doing it. Because certainly, when that season of 70 years, he said that when 70 years was up, the Bible says that when Daniel lifted up his voice to pray, he said from the very day, you decided to pray. I heard you from heaven. Which means that they were waiting. When 70 years was up, it didn't take a prayer tower. It took one person. Because the season was up. And the Lord showed up. And all of a sudden, the Bible says that when, when the angels, the principalities and powers, God had to send a whole archangel. Anybody that is sitting on your blessing, sitting on that which belongs to you, may they be dethroned in the mighty name of Jesus. May they be dethroned in the name of Jesus. We move them and we dislocate their works and their plans and we demand that may the counsel of the Lord concerning your life be established in seven days may you hear his voice in seven days may you see unprecedented miracles things that have existed for long all of a sudden because you have come into your season in seven days may unprecedented miracles and testimonies surround your life Oh, Jesus, we love you. May the Lord pick you up. And, and, and with his wind, that brings transformation. The Bible said that, for he destroyed a ship from Tarshish with an east wind. May every wind and the east wind destroy every gate of opposition in your life. And may you be moved into your miraculous moment. You are a testimony. The world has not seen anything yet. The world is yet to experience the unprecedented and influential person. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord establish his throne over your life. You've become a testimony already. I see and I can hear a big laugh. It is a laughter, a laughter, a laughter that the Lord God has brought over your life. Weep no more. Sadness is over. And the joy of the Lord has become your strength. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are elevated beyond your peers. You will excel. Even in the name of Jesus. Where people have not made it. You will make it. Today. We 
we place an injunction over everything that the devil has withhold that belongs to you in the name of Jesus people that came to your life and gave you false advice we ask in the name of Jesus may they call it back in the name of Jesus and may the king of glory King Jesus enter into that life may every gate be lifted may every gate be lifted and we call forth miracles in the name of Jesus every delay has ceased every delay has ceased in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Lord bless you the Lord establish you may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you you are blessed beyond the case in the name of Jesus our mission is raising overcomers setting the captives free Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take with the Word of God as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness. And we hope you've been blessed by today's message. Worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or give us a call on 0207-277-8700. You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org. And remember, there is progress in freedom.